Hi, in this video we're going to create some custom sliders using panels and paint routines. So I've created a new project folder on my desktop, this one called custom controls. There's nothing in there other than in this images folder I have an empty PNG image and this will become important later on. I've discussed making an empty PNG in other videos. And I've added an interface script to this project, there's nothing else in here, it's just the interface script and that's all we're going to need today. So what we have in highs is we can add a slider for example, and the default graphic for a slider is actually a knob, but we can choose over here to, where is it, to change the style to a horizontal slider, a vertical slider, or a range slider, and we could replace the graphics entirely with a custom film strip. What we're going to do today is create an entirely customizable slider, or it could be a knob or a range slider, and we're going to do that using panels and paint routines. So I'm going to delete this control, and I'm going to add a panel. And we're going to start simple and get progressively more advanced. So let's um, give this panel a height, say 300. Nope, that's the width. I'll give it a width of 95 and a height of 300. But this will work with any dimensions. We're also going to set the callbacks to clicks, hover and dragging. And we're also going to set the range, the min and the max. We'll set it from 0 to uh, 500. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to hit compile to set all that up. So now we've got our slider. We're going to get a reference for that. And with this first iteration of our custom slider, we're going to need a paint routine. So that's our standard paint routine function. And now our slider has disappeared because we've taken over the drawing a bit. So let's just quickly fill that back in. So we'll do g dot fill all, and we'll actually use the slider's background color. This dot get bg color. And our slider reappears. And we're also going to need a mouse callback. So there's our mouse callback function. One thing in, a, in my previous video on paint routines, instead of having event there, I put E. And I said you could use any name you wanted. Turns out that wasn't quite right, because if we use event, that means inside the callback we can make use of the autocomplete whereas if we customize that and set it to e then even though i'm hitting escape the autocomplete isn't going to come up so you can use any name you want but if you don't use event you'll lose the autocomplete so i'll leave it as event for today okay let's start off by filling in the mouse callback so this is what's going to trigger when we click and move the mouse around on the panel. And we're interested in the drag action, and that's where you click and move the mouse. So we're going to say if event.drag. So we've got the drag event, which is going to trigger when we're dragging the mouse around in the panel. And now the, the next bit, there's two ways to do it. We can either use the um, drag position and the um, work out where the mouse was clicked down and then where it's been dragged to, so using a delta to work out the position of the mouse. Or we can just use the Y value, so where the mouse is along the Y axis of the panel. And I'm going to use that method, and what that means is I just want to make sure the mouse isn't outside of the panel, so it's not below the panel or above it, it's within it. So I'm just going to use an if statement to check that our mouse is within the panel, so if event.y, so that's the y position, is greater than or equal to 0, so 0 is the top, and event.y is less than or equal to this.getHeight, so that's the height of the panel. So what we're saying here is if the mouse is greater than 0, so it's not at the top, it's down from the top, and it's less than the height, so it's not beyond the bottom of the panel, it's above it, then do some stuff. And now we're going to put the stuff in here. So the stuff we're going to do is we're going to set the value of the panel to be the height of the panel minus the mouse position. 
So we could do it like this. I'm just going to put this in for now. Dot set value. This dot get height minus event dot y. And now all we've got to do is repaint the panel. So we'll call this dot repaint. So I'm gonna hit F5 on there. Nothing's gonna happen yet because we haven't filled in our paint routine. So let's fill in our paint routine. So first of all in the paint routine, let's just check that we are getting the value through. So we'll do console dot print this dot get value. And we'll hit compile. So now if I click and move the mouse in here, we should see the, the value change and it will be printed down in the console. And the value is going to be constrained not to the actual value of the panel, which is between 0 and 500, but it's going to be constrained to the height of the panel because that's what we're currently constraining it to. So we can see it's 296 and down to 1. So it's, we'll, we'll sort out these rounding problems later on, but 0 to 300 basically. Uh, we're also going to need an item color for our panel, so let's just set the item color now. So this is the color that we're going to use to actually um, fill in the panel with for the slider. So we'll do g dot set color, and it's going to be this dot get item color. And now we're going to work out what that new value is to actually paint the panel. So we'll create a variable called new value. Remember that when we're in a, a function, not an inline function, we have to use var variables. This is really the only time you should be using vars. The rest of the time should be local variables or reg variables or constant variables. Um, so we're going to have a new variable, a new value, and that is going to be equal to the height, this.getHeight, minus the value, this.getValue. And then we're going to fill it in. So we're going to use a rectangle, but later on we'll change this to be more interesting. But for now we'll just have a single rectangle. So in our rectangle we have to give it the coordinates x, y, width and height. So the x is going to be 0, and the width is going to be the width of the panel, this.getWidth. Now the y position and the height, these are the interesting things, because when we're drawing in the panel, We've got to remember that the zero position is at the top and the maximum value, the height of the panel, refers to the bottom of the panel. But when we're moving the mouse, obviously the bottom is the bottom, that's going to be the lowest value, and the top is the maximum value. So we've kind of got to flip it around. So for the height, we're going to use the height of the panel. So we're filling in from wherever we set the Y, which we haven't set yet, but wherever we set the Y, we're filling in from there to the bottom of the panel. And the Y position is going to be our new value. And if I click and drag, there's our basic customized panel. So just to recap this, wherever I click, that is calculating this new value and the panel is being painted from the mouse position down to the bottom of the panel. So this is how I used to make custom panels in highs. This is basically what I do. I have a custom paint routine and a custom mouse callback. Now I'd make it a little bit more advanced. I'd have things so you could control click, for example, to reset the slider to a, a default position. I'd have it so you'd hold shift to move it in smaller increments. Um, and, and all sorts of stuff like that. And I was doing all of that in a custom paint routine. And you can still do it that way if you want. But there's actually an easier way. So that's what we're going to explore next. So let me just show you something quickly. If I add a, a regular slider, I'm going to set the mode, uh, sorry, the style to vertical. And let's give it the same dimensions as our panel. And we can give it similar colors as well. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So if we were using a built-in slider, we can get something that approximates our current custom slider. Of course, we can customize our custom slider even more. But one thing you'll notice is we can see the value in the middle here. And some other settings we have for the regular slider is I can turn on the value pop-up. So let's enable that. So now we have a value pop up there. 
at the side. If I hold control and click, I can enter a value. Let me just turn that off. So that's the text box. We'll turn that off. If I double click, it will reset the slider to its default position, which in this case is zero. If I press shift and click, I can enter the value again. So like we had before when we had the text box showing. And there are lots of other benefits to using the um, basic slider. The only downside is we can't customize it unless we use a film strip. So what I ended up doing, instead of doing my really complicated um, mouse callback and paint routine, I ended up combining the default knob and the panel. So I get the best of both worlds. So I'm going to get access to all of the features that the default slider already has. Plus I'm going to be able to paint it to make it look like whatever I want it to look like without having to use external image files. So that's what we're going to look at now. So the way I do that is first of all, I make the real slider invisible and I do that using my empty PNG image. So this is just a, a PNG with 100% alpha. So it is transparent. So I set that. I'm going to set the number of strips to one. I'm going to hit enter and that slider disappears. So we'll hit compile on that. So that slider has now vanished. The next thing I'm going to do is put this slider inside the panel. So the panel becomes its parent and I'm going to set its X and Y, the X and Y of the slider to zero zero. So it's exactly in line with the panel. And this is why it was also important that it has the same dimensions as the panel. Okay. So next we need to make sure the minimum and maximum values are the same for both the slider and the panel. So they should both be the same, 0 to 500, 0 to 500. And then I'm just going to hit compile again just to clean up the graphics there. Okay, so that's all done. Now when I click on this um, panel, we're actually clicking on the slider. And that's why we can see the value pop up there. Now our paint routine isn't triggering because we're not clicking the panel. We're clicking the slider. So this is what we have to um, update. So the first thing is we're not going to use the mouse callback of the panel. So we can turn off the cut, the allow callbacks. We can disable that and we can actually delete this mouse callback. So instead, what we're going to use is the control callback of the um, slider. So there's our control callback and we're going to set the value of the panel to the value of the slider. And now we've got basically the same functionality we had before, but there's a problem. What's happening is we're now using the value of the knob. So that's zero to 500. Whereas with our previous version, we were using the X position of the panel, which was between zero and the height of the panel. So we're using a different range of values. So now this is where we have to do the conversion. So we're going to do the conversion up here in our paint routine. And it's a really simple formula. We're going to take the height of the panel. We're going to divide it by the maximum value. So that's this, this being the panel, get max. So that's the maximum value, which is 500. And then we're going to multiply that by the value passed in from the knob. So it's just this dot get value. Semicolon on the end and hit F5. Oh yes, one more thing we have to do is this new value now has to be taken off of the height of the panel. So we'll do this dot get height minus new value. And um, oh, one more thing we need to actually repaint the panel. So we'll do that back down here in our slider callback. And I'll hit F5 and now that works. And it also gets rid of that rounding problem without me having to do some more maths to figure that out. So we've got the sensitivity as well. So if I change the sensitivity of the knob, that will reflect as well. And if I hold shift and click, we can specify a particular value. And if I double click, it'll reset to the default position. So all of these values that we're seeing at the side and when I enter a value here or when I um, double click to reset to the default, these are the knobs settings, not the panel settings. So if I set the, the, the um, knobs default value to 100 and double click, 
it's going to update to 100 and it doesn't matter what setting the panel has because we're not referring to it in the script and there's no callback being triggered for the panel. Okay, one other thing we can do um, just with this simple example is let's add a little line across the top of the, um, what we would call that, the slider position, I guess, the level. So we'll just add a white line. So we'll do g.setColor and set this to white. And then we'll draw a line. So the X position is going to be zero. The second X position is going to be the width of the panel. The Y position is going to be the same as we have here. And the Y position two is also going to be the same thing. And then the line thickness, let's put that at five semicolon on the end and if I hit F5 we should get a nice thick white line across there. There we go. Well not as thick as I was thinking it was going to be but still that's okay. Let's zoom in on this. So that's a basic customized slider and I'm going to show you next how to do a bi-directional version of this and then we'll look at styling it some more and making it more unique rather than just looking like a generic slider. Okay, so to do a bi-directional slider, first of all, I'm going to get rid of this white line. We'll worry about styling later. Um, we're going to change the range of the knob. Let's set it to minus 500. So it's minus 500 to plus 500. And we also need to do the same on the panel. And I'll just hit compile there. And now if I move this, it's going to be weird. So, yeah. You can see the value goes all the way down to minus 500, but we're well off the range. And of course, with a bi-directional slider, we want it to actually draw the slider from the middle upwards or downwards, depending on which way we drag. So we're going to have to change our paint routine. So I'm sure there's a single formula we can use to have both the up and down um, directions of a bi-directional slider, but I don't know what it is. The formula I've come up with uses, um, well, it's two formulas. One, if we're going from the middle position from zero up, basically, and another if we're going from zero down. So that's the way I'm going to show you how to do it. If you discover a better way, please share it with me. Instead of this new value variable, we're gonna have upper value. So that's if the value is zero or above. And we're gonna have another one called lower value. And that's if it's below zero. So the upper value is going to be the height of the panel divided by two because we're going from the center of the panel upwards. Then this is where it gets pretty much similar to the previous one. We're going to divide it by the maximum value of the um, panel and then times it by the actual value that we've passed from our um, slider. So that's the upper value done. So the lower value is quite similar. It's going to be this dot get height divided by two, and then again divided, but instead of by the maximum, we're going to divide it by the minimum because we're going down, and then we multiply it by the value. So pretty much the same, we're just changing the max for the min. And then lastly, we need a little if statement so we know which one of these values to call. So we'll say if this dot get value is greater than zero. We're going to use the upper value and we're going to paint it in there. And then otherwise it must be the lower value. So we will um, use the uh, lower value. So now we just need to change these a bit. So this is going to be the height divided by two for the Y position because we want to paint from the middle of the panel upwards or downwards. And then we need to, for, if we're going up, we need to minus the upper value. So just minus the upper value. And then the actual uh, height, we're gonna set that to upper value as well. And then going down, it's pretty similar. We're going to divide by two. We don't need to minus any value off, but we do need to change the height to use the lower value. So I'm gonna hit F5, and if I've done that correctly, we should have a bi-directional slider. 
that looks pretty good. Yep, that's working as expected. And the great thing about this little formula here is that we can have, um, it, it doesn't have to be even, it doesn't have to be minus 500 to plus 500. We could do like minus uh, 300 to plus 500 and that would work as well. So this is a simple way of doing a bi-directional slider. Like I say, if you know a better formula than what I've used here, please let me know. Um, and uh, that'll be great to share with other people as well. So I'll just make this a bit wider so we've got the full thing on the screen so you can take note of that. If you're one of my Patreon supporters, you'll also get access to this uh, code. I'll, I'll post it with the video on uh, Patreon. Okay, so let's go back to our non-bi-directional version and then we will look at customizing the slider to make it look a bit nicer. Okay, so we're back to the original version, 0 to 500, and not bi-directional. So now we're just going to sort of beautify this a bit and make it look pretty. Okay, first of all, I think I'm going to make it a bit narrower. So let's change the width and the height. Let's have it 50 and... Um, uh, yeah, 300 high is still fine, but we'll have it as 50 wide instead. So I'm going to have it a bit narrower. And I think rather than having, um, what sort of style should we do? I'm thinking a rounded style. Let's do a rounded rectangle. So instead of this fill all, we'll do a rounded rectangle. So we'll set the color to the background color again. And then we actually need to fill in the rectangle. So at the moment, there's no background color there. So we need to fill that in. G.fill rounded rectangle. And X, Y width and height. And the corner size, we'll put five in there. Might change that. So the X and Y is going to be zero and zero, top left corner. And the width is going to be the width of the panel. And the height is going to be the height of the panel. Okay, let's increase that corner size a bit. There we go. Okay, so um, we've got our rounded rectangle background. It's not rounded at the bottom because it's overlaid by this red rectangle. If I pull that down, we can see it's rounded there as well. Um, so let's see. I'm going to have a black line come right down the middle of this. I'm just kind of winging this, by the way. I haven't pre-plan exactly what I'm going to do. So let's have, um, let's set the color to black. And we'll draw a line. And the X value, let's see, I, I want this to be in the center. So we're gonna have to take the width and divide it by two. And then we also need the width of the line. So let's say I make the line six. So we need half of that. So we'll do minus three. And that will be the same for the other X value as well. And then the Y value is going to be zero. And the second Y is going to be the height of the panel. And then the width will be six. So let's see if that works out. So that's off center. Let me have a look at what's going on there. Maybe I don't need to actually minus three there. Let's just get rid of that and see if that fixes it. Uh, that's, that still doesn't look quite central to me. I think maybe let's try minus one. Oh, is it a quarter I should be minusing off rather than? Oh, that's good enough. That'll do. Okay. So um, the next thing, I don't want this bar to go all from the bottom all the way up. I want it to be like um, like a fader. So we need to change this one. So let's have a look. So we've got fill rectangle. Um, I'm going to change it. So I'm just going to comment that out for now. I'm going to do a rounded rectangle. And I also want to change the uh, color of this. I don't like that red color. Let's make it a sort of deep blue. Uh, something like that for now. Okay, and we're going to do a rounded rectangle. So fill rounded rectangle. And again, X, Y, width and height. Corner size, we'll try five, might change that. 
Um, how wide do I want this to be? Let's say we'll have it half the width of the panel for now. So it's nice when you're doing things like this, if you can refer to the panel um, for as many of the dimensions you're using as possible. That way, when you change the panel size, or if you change the panel size, all your graphics will update and will fit nicely as well. And it also helps if you spell width correctly. There we go. And the height, I'll just do like um, 50. Yeah, let's, let's do 50 for now. Okay, the X position. This dot get width divided by four. Oh, and yeah, that needs to be divided by two. There we go. And then the Y position is going to be our new value we had before. So let's try that. And if I move the mouse up, it goes down. So that's not very good. So we need to do this dot get height minus new value like we had before. There we go. Um, and it goes off the bottom of the page there. We'll sort that out later. Um, why is it not got the correct background color though? Oh, I changed the color of the knob instead of the color of the um, panel, that's why. There we go. Okay, so let's just change some dimensions here. I wanna make the width of this a bit wider. So instead of divided by two, I'll just do minus 10. And then we're gonna to have to change the X position as well. So instead of minus four, let's just see, it's going to end up being something like just putting 10 in there. Five, let's see, five, yeah, there we go. Okay, now I'll just get rid of some of these blank lines, just tidy up a little bit. Okay, so we have a slider of some description. Um, let's change this background color a bit. There we go, something like that. So that's another way you can customize it and have it as a fader rather than um, just like a sort of single level slider. And you can do anything with this vector wise, like you could change this for um, a vector path, you could use a circle, you could add drop shadows to it, you can do all the stuff we covered in the paint routines um, tutorial. So you're not limited to just doing um, quick little designs like this. Um, one thing we need to fix though is we're going off the bottom of the um, path here. So let's see what's going on there. What we're going to do, I'm going to console print the value that we're using, new value. And um, actually we're using this dot get height minus new value. So let's put that in there. Just so I can observe exactly what's happening here so I can see where the problem occurs. So uh, what's the height of our panel? The panel is 300 high, okay. So yeah, that's 300 there. And then if I raise it, comes in and round about there, it's 250. Yeah, okay, so it's 250. So the, the reason we're having this problem is because um, with the slider, that we had previously where it went where it was just a, a bar that filled up that filled up from zero and zero is down here but when we're doing it like this with a fader this fader has its own height which in this case is 50 so it's actually hitting the bottom of the slider when it gets to um 50 from the lowest level so let me show you what i mean over here we can see that the value is currently at 250 and our fader has a height of 50 so 250 plus 50 is 300 and that gives us the height of the panel so we just need to compensate for the height of this fader so the simplest way to deal with this is to um, essentially take 50 off of the height of the panel within our calculation so where we're using this dot get height just make sure we subtract 50 so we'll put it in parentheses and we'll subtract 50 there and we're also using it here as well. So we will subtract 50 here as well. And that doesn't limit the range of our, uh, our real slider. It just limits the internal height that we're using for the calculation. So it still goes from zero to 500, but now our fader doesn't go off the edges of the panel. Okay guys, so that's how to do a very simple a customized slider in highs um, again you can adapt this to any needs you have 
Um, you can style it however you wish. And of course, I've only demonstrated a vertical slider here, but you can also do horizontal sliders and you can do circular knobs as well. It doesn't have to be a slider. There's a really good tutorial in the Hides documentation um, for how to make a, a round knob with a panel. So I'll link that in below the video. It's a really good read and it's um, a whole guide to panels and paint routines and mouse callbacks in general. So you should check it out. It's um, it's where all the information you'll ever need about panels is. Um, there's an upcoming thing in Highs. Uh, Christoph's currently implementing a bit at a time, uh, what he's calling a true look and feel, which is going to be a way where we can actually customize the widgets that are in Highs. So perhaps one day we won't need to use custom panels. We'll be able to put our paint routines directly onto um, a slider widget so that will be really good and um, that will just reduce some of the complexity of this kind of thing but anyway I hope you found that helpful I hope you can use this in your projects one last thing I should show you um, if you are using this to uh, trigger uh, the panels callback remember to put inside your um, your knobs callback you have to put the name of the panel and call the dot changed function and that will trigger the panels callback. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them below the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, click the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos, and please click the like button if you've enjoyed what you've seen. I have a Patreon page where you can support me and get access to um, little code snippets and other tutorials I do specifically for my Patreon supporters. The link to that is in the video description. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.